Time to head back to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Hi, Brown fans. Here's some truth and reason about Odell Beckham. The sports fans have pretty much focused on what's happening on the field. But you should take a look at the management. You have to recognize that Odell Beckham wasn't brought in by the current uh, general manager. And I think what had happened after the 2000 season, they learned that the team could win without him. The lack of targets and a lack of uh, play in this season was pretty much done to to make sure he was healthy because they made a decision to deal him. It has nothing to do with Baker Mayfield. The whole play scheme was to keep him healthy and so they will be able to deal him. The real tragedy in the thing is that uh, he is a good player and the Browns gave up so much to acquire him and in the end, they got nothing in return. Just, just my thoughts. All right, and again, appreciate the voicemails. Uh, the only thing I would say is uh, it doesn't make sense not to throw him the ball if you plan on playing him because his stats are going to be down for the second year in a row. So, so I, I don't understand that thought process. The other thing I'll say is Andrew Berry was pretty good about not being your guy, my guy, this guy, that guy. He was when he took over, you know. He, he knew he was taking over the Browns, and they were the Browns. It wasn't John Dorsey's Browns versus his Browns. Um, it, for whatever reason, nobody can figure out why it didn't work in this offense for Odell Beckham, but it didn't. Right, and, and that's I, – I, I hate to be like, oh, it's as simple as it, it just didn't – it didn't work. It just didn't work. Like, I don't – I from a football standpoint, I've tried to break this down as much as I possibly can. I don't have a – I don't have an answer – it just quite simply, it just didn't work in Cleveland. I don't know why it didn't. I don't know what could have been changed. It just didn't work. And, and that's, a, that's a sad reality about it. But again, the fact that they tried their damnedest to. And like you said, if they were just trying to trade him, then wouldn't you want to showcase him at that point? So again, I, I don't understand the rationale behind that. But again, I, I think that it comes down to you know, just the, the reality of the fact that it just didn't work in Cleveland. And, you know, he goes on to the Rams, plays with Cooper Cup, opposite of him. He's the number two there, and he's able to play well. And, and you know what? Good for Odell. Good for him. Good good for him getting a ring. And I'm happy that it worked out well for him. But at the same time, in Cleveland, it just didn't work out. It just wasn't a good fit. That's all. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, I'm not against Odell. I was thrilled when he was here. Right. Didn't like, didn't like uh, you know, the way he left, but that, that is what it is at this point. Um, here's, here's a bigger concern globally. <clears throat> Browns need a receiver. It didn't work out for Odell. If you're a number one receiver, you're going to be a little leery of coming into this offense, I think. Don't you? Yeah, and to be honest, that's also why I look at, you know, free agency and think when people are saying, oh, well, you can get your number one option out there or – you know, you can go ahead and trade for this guy. No veteran receiver is going to willingly choose to go into this offense after what happened this past season. I, that's just the, that's just reality there. But that's also why, again, I look at drafting, and not only does it make sense contractually, but also makes sense because, again, you're bringing somebody in who not only are you choosing to bring into this offense, but it also doesn't really matter at that point whether or not, you know, the, the fit, at least on their standpoint, really matters I, I think that you know I, I look at how the team views him that's fine they can bring him in great but you're not willing you're not trying to court him in, into coming into Cleveland at that point it's just selecting him and moving on with the team as is so that's where I think that again you, you got to go and get your number one in the draft I think that's that's not a that's not a debate you have to go ahead and get your number one in the draft and at that point then you're set but I think that looking at for agency and thinking, oh, you can get Christian Kirk to be your number one. Or, you know, again, some people wanting Mike Williams, go and get him and to be your – you're not going to get your number one in free agency. That's just not how it's going to work. Again, with the way that it played out this year, uh, I think that your best bet is going through the draft to get your number one. Yeah, kind of turn the phrase that uh, Mike Tomlin had when he released Melvin Ingram. Uh, we need hostages because it doesn't look like we're going to get many volunteers <laughs> to play wide receiver um, in this offense. Matt,